Good morning. I'm running uh, one of my favorite trails in Boulder called Lion's Lair. It's kind of the backside of Mount Sanitas. It's a gorgeous day, gorgeous morning. And uh, yeah, take you along. Tell me how you go. Tell me, baby, is it cool to touch? Tell me, man, that you can trust, not just a fool to lust. Coming to hit you on the bus is so ironic. Exotic on the verge of erotic. I'm hitting switches on misses like I've been fixed with hydraulics. My up and down like a roller coaster. Can I come inside you? I ain't stop until the show is over. Cause I'm a rider in and out just like a robbery. I'll probably be a freak and let you get on top of me. Cause the rockin' knees, nights full of LSA. A living legend, you ain't heard about them players living Cali days. Dolores Tucker. All right, so last week on the podcast, I talked about this article called Swifter, Higher, Faster, um, or Swifter, Higher, Stronger, What's on the Menu by a really world-renowned exercise physiologist and uh, researcher in the field of sports science, Dr. Luis Burke. Um, and one thing I want to do more in these videos is, you know, aside from showing kind of what I'm doing, but also more educational stuff, more helpful, valuable, um, evidence-based education stuff that is going to help you as, as a human and in today's case as an athlete. So I kind of wanted to just summarize sort of the findings from this article because I think it's, it's really, really important, really helpful. It's basically a review of kind of the latest scientific literature on athletes and in specifically kind of endurance athletes and fueling for, um, you know, nutrition for sports and for, for athletes. So, um, basically this review kind of goes through sort of the main findings in terms of, you know, carbohydrate metabolism and fueling versus fat and, uh, different nutrients of concern for athletes talking about relative energy d deficiency in sport, also known as REDS. Uh, which is a, a common problem, having low energy availability. Um, so kind of the first main topic here is is carbohydrates and this kind of fuel crisis that is prevalent not only within the athletic population, but just with the general population. People are so confused about fat versus carbs versus protein and how much do we need and what should we be focused on. And it's been this interesting shift because we've known for, for decades, for, for longer, that carbohydrates are honestly the preferred fuel of uh, the body during intense exercise especially. But even in endurance events like the marathon or ultra marathons, you're going to be use, using a lot of carbohydrates. And there's a reason for this. There's actually a 5% uh, more a higher efficiency rate for oxidizing carbohydrates versus fat uh, in the muscle cells to generate ATP to uh, provide energy for those muscles. So I just wanna read this quick section um, that from directly from the article that kind of summarizes this, this idea. So more notably, the observed reduction in the utilization of carbohydrate during submaximal exercise or glycogen sparing, initially thought to be advantageous in preserving this fuel for later oxidation, was discovered to be impaired carbohydrate oxidation caused by reduced muscle glycogenolysis and the re down regulation of flux through the citric acid, acid cycle, secondary to reduced pyruvate dehydrogenase activity. Not super important. In sports where success is determined by high intensity aerobic exercise, either throughout the event, such as in cycling time trial or a 10K run, or at critical stages within team sports or breakaways and finishes in marathons, Ironman triathlons, and longer bike races, the highest sustainable rates of muscle energy turnover require the better economy of ATP production from carbohydrate oxidation. Short-term fat adaptation strategies or even long-term adaptation uh, to ketogenic, low-carb, high-fat diet, which can increase normal rates of fat oxidation by two or three times, are limited in application to a small range of sporting events in which utilization is low enough for muscle energy to be provided by fat oxidation. 
To date, it appears that protocols that substantially increase fat oxidation also decrease metabolic flexibility by reducing carbohydrate substrate pools and or the ability to rapidly oxidize them. The bottom line is that when elite athletes train for and compete in most sporting events, carbohydrate fuels are the predominant and critical substrate for the working muscles, and the availability of carbohydrate rather than fat wins gold medals. So kind of what this kind of comes back to is the theme throughout this article is that this kind of battle between high carb versus low carb diets is sort of misguided and there's a lot of a lot of misinformation a lot of confusion out there um, but the evidence really supports the idea that carbohydrates are um, really an essential fuel and so one thing that I see a lot with athletes that I train with or people that I know um, or just even in the you know kind of common mainstream media and blogosphere is still this concept that carbs are bad and evil and that they should be avoided even for athletes and um, it's just not the case just like fat just like protein carbohydrates are an essential macronutrient that we do need and there are, is definitely going to be benefits to training the body to utilize more fat as fuel and to kind of adapt the body especially if you're an ultra like an ultra endurance athlete there's a lot of benefit to uh, training the body to whether it's through fasting or through low carbohydrate availability training um, in your sport there's some benefit to that but it doesn't support uh, necessarily any massive performance gains like the performance games gains that are seen through increasing glycogen stores or training with uh, you know training with higher amounts of carbohydrate availability in your respective sport um, so that's uh, just kind of the main point of this article and a couple other topics that I just wanted to mention in this video. Um, I definitely recommend listening to the full podcast, which I'll link below. I'll also link this um, article here in the description of this video. But I definitely recommend listening to the full podcast because I kind of dive more deeply into a lot of these concepts. But, um, you know, one thing I wanted to mention really quick that I thought was really interesting about this article was that they found that resting glycogen concentrations are higher in endurance trained individuals rather than sedentary ones so glycogen is the storage form of carbohydrate in the body it's found in muscles and liver um, and it's basically a storage form of carbohydrate that is readily accessible to be used as fuel and so when you train as an athlete you inherently develop larger stores larger storage form uh, of this of this substrate basically to be used in endurance exercise or whatever whatever activity you're doing. Another really cool thing is that there is strong evidence that supports that consuming carbohydrate during activity improves performance. And that should kind of come as no surprise. We know we need to eat during longer, you know, endurance activity like riding bikes or doing marathons, stuff like that. Um, and the recommendation is to consume around 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrate per hour in activities that last uh, around two to three hours and around 60 to 90 grams of, of carbohydrate for kind of those longer, more ultra endurance events. So just a couple cool little, um, you know, interesting facts there. Uh, one thing I'm, I'm really focused on, like, I, like I've said before, is, is kind of the sports nutrition piece. And I'm trying to learn and digest as much as I can about um, the best available evidence for, for, for sports nutrition as I work on my uh, master's thesis in this area. So um, I hope you found that interesting and helpful and please like leave a question down below if you have questions on this stuff. I would love to kind of keep the discussion going. Like I said, listen to the podcast uh, where I dive a little bit more deep into this stuff and please check out the article that I will have also linked because it's, it's just a really great resource for, for athletes out there. So thank you so much for listening and watching and I will see you in the next video.